Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Across the Ocean, the YouTube show for lovers of underwater image making. My name's James in Miami. And this is Matthias, straight from Zurich. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Across the Ocean. As always, it's so great to have you with us as Matthias and I discuss our episode 31, where we're going to be talking about how to buy and sell used underwater filming equipment, which is a very topical topic because I'm currently considering perhaps, maybe, selling my Panasonic GH5 rig. But first, Matthias, mm -hmm. how are you doing, buddy? Shocked. <laughs> shocked of what I just heard. No, I'm doing great, uh, but I want to hear more about that that thing that you just said before. Um, but other than that, I'm doing fantastic. I'm just about to go on vacation, so I'm fairly busy trying to get everything organized before I go away for a couple of weeks. So you know how it is, pure mayhem every time before you leave for vacation, but that's part of the game. How is life over there on the other side? Yeah, no, everything here is fantastic. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we've, uh, you know, it was great seeing you in Zurich last month. Uh, we got to hang out uh, a little bit, have a cup of coffee. And uh, and I got just straight back into it here. So um, so basically, I want to dive straight back into it. So, they, they, you know, buying and selling uh, used dive gear and camera gear is something that I've done in the past. The actual GH5 that I'm recording this on, I bought secondhand to have a second body a backup camera uh so to speak um so it's definitely something i'm kind of you know i've navigated the waters with do you have a lot of experience buying and selling used gear not so much buying to be honest um it's more the selling part that i do a lot simply because for all the reviews and stuff i i receive gear that i can then mostly keep and because i don't, don't have any use to have like 27 different cameras so once I've tested it, I've done the review, and I've decided that it's not gonna be hugely beneficial to my arsenal of equipment, I then try to sell it. So with the selling part, I have a quite a bit of experience. Buying, I have to be honest, I haven't really bought a lot of stuff secondhand in terms of camera gear. Yeah, well, that's nice. That's a nice position to be in. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's good to hear you're not a hoarder like I am. I try not to. If you open my cabinet here, it's going to tell a different story. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, why don't you kick it off first and we'll, we'll, we'll divide the video into two and we'll, we'll handle how to sell gear and then we'll, we'll talk later on about how to buy gear. Um, but why don't you kick it off, Matthias, with your top points for how to uh, sell uh, used camera equipment that you no longer have a use for? Absolutely, my pleasure. So I've got three points there. The first one is not to wait too long to start selling the gear. And I mean, like if you've uh, got an old GoPro, for example, let's say a GoPro 7, you don't want to sell it now when we are just expecting the GoPro 12 to come out because now you won't really be able to get any decent money for it anymore. But if you had decided to sell the GoPro 7 as the GoPro 8 came out, you would have made a lot more money or would have been able to just ask for a lot more money that way. So try not to hold on to your gear too long. If you're not using it, someone else can benefit from that piece of gear uh, and use it much better than what you can. The second point that I've written down is to make sure that your gear is properly working before you sell it. Because you know, you don't want to be the one buying gear that's not properly working, so you should be making sure that the stuff that you sell is working properly and that you can sell it with a clean conscious, knowing that you haven't done anything wrong and you haven't been, you know, um, trying to rip someone off that way. That's not a nice thing, so always try to do that because karma always comes back and if you do that, you'll end up buying gear that's not working yourself at one point in the future. Um, and last but not least, um, always think about how you want to handle the delivery of the gear that you sell. I personally like to sell gear just in like my local area here because that way I can tell people to come by my office to pick it up here. We can at the same time look at the gear, they can make sure that it works, I can make sure they know it works and it is in a working condition as I pass it on to them and receive the money. 
um, and I don't like posting gear um, to people just because it does cost me quite a bit of time wrapping it all up, packaging it, bringing it to the post office, sending it off. And if it's like a small piece of gear like a GoPro that will only make you $100, consider whether or not it's really worth putting that extra effort in to pack it, bring it to the post office and send it somewhere for sort of the limited amount of money that you're gonna make with that. So yeah, those are my three tips on uh, selling gear. Now I'm curious to hear yours. Yeah, very good. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely agree with the uh, with the GoPro point of like you know they 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 come out so often and the the you know the improvements and the technology is moving so fast that if you hang on to a piece of kit too long, you basically just have a paperweight. There's no value to it anymore. No one's going to want to buy it. So you know I didn't used to be that way. I used to just buy a camera and and use it until it stopped working. But now I've definitely got more into the habit of like okay let's there's a new one coming so let's get rid of this one and and uh, and trade up. So I think that's 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 super high value there. So I also have three points on how to sell used dive gear. My first one is um, if you want to create maximum value for yourself and for the person who's potentially buying your gear, try to package the gear together. So in the instance of you're trading up a GoPro, like throw the dive housing in as well. Maybe you've got a spare tray lying around. Maybe you've got some lights you don't use anymore. Try and make that one item and sell it as a complete package and present value, uh, both clearing out space that you know for items that not, you're not using anymore, but also presenting value to the person buying it. It's gonna help you make a sale faster. Um, if you're basically selling them a whole kit, a whole setup that they can just take, they've got everything they need, they can go get in the water, you know, include spare batteries, include SD cards, that kind of stuff. That helps uh, make a package a lot more attractive to any potential buyer. So think about what other gear you could include that's related to the item you're selling to try and make it a little bit more attractive. Um, as you said, Matthias, you know, be realistic. Uh, about the valuation of your gear, right? Don't try and sell a GoPro 7 for 350 bucks when a brand new 12 comes out and it's 400. Like, it's just not gonna happen. You're just gonna, the ad's gonna sit there. You're not gonna get any interest. You know, buyers are, are educated, they're smart. You're not gonna make a surprise bargain uh, or make a surprise profit on old pieces of kit. So if you're considering selling something, as I am with my current package, I'm going to look around at what other people are selling similar gear for. Obviously, I'm going to consider what I'm including and what they're including and this, that, and the other. But, you know, if it's, if it's a camera that you've only had for a little while, but it's been out for five years, that camera is five years old in terms of technology. So you've got to kind of look at what the market value is and, and put a fair price on it. Otherwise, you're just not going to make a sale. Um, and then last off, when you're posting your ad and you're, you're getting into the weeds of the description and the photos, you know, more detail is always better than less detail. So be super honest and super clear about any uh, dings or marks on it or any, any sort of misfunctions or what, what have you, um, because the buyer is going to want to know that. And if you're honest about it, again, it, it breeds trust and then that makes it more, uh, more likely that you're going to make a sale. So just be super honest about the condition, um, show close up photos of any, any scratches or anything on the housing or whatever it may be um, and just make sure that you've got as much detail up front as possible you know camera gear runs expensive so people are going to really want to see uh, you know a lot of detailed photos don't just post one photo of it and think that people are going to be cool with with buying from that one photo so more detail always better but those are my tips for selling Let's flip that now and look at buying used gear. As you said, you don't have as much experience as probably I do in, in buying and selling. I, I tend to scroll Facebook Marketplace, offer up all the apps we got over here and just have a look, uh, have a look for stuff. And, you know, not just in the diving world, but in, in general as well. Records uh, is, a, is a famous one. I'm always, always digging around for that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, what, what would be your top three tips for, uh, for buying used underwater filming equipment? Yes, uh, well, just a quick uh, side note to what you were saying. There's actually a very good reason why I don't spend a lot of time on these platforms scrolling through offers, because if I did, I would have a lot more gear lying around here in my office than I already do. So that is a very, very simple and clear, precautious reason why I don't do that too often. It's about self-control. Yeah. Self-control. I try. I try. I don't always succeed, but I try. But here is the three tips that I would uh, consider that, that I would look out for when I do buy used underwater camera gear. 
First of all, I would always try to buy locally if possible for the same reason as I mentioned before in the selling part. If I buy locally, I know that I can go to the person selling the gear, uh, I can drive there, it's not going to take me a lot of time and I can actually look at the gear firsthand. I can take it in my hand, I can flip it around, I can make sure that it's properly working and that I'm satisfied with what I'm getting for my money. So that's always something that I would prefer. If you can't buy locally or the piece of gear that you want to get is not available anywhere close to you, then be aware that there is different different sort of parties that you can buy it. You can either buy from uh, other individuals, private people, or you can also buy from trusted resellers, stores like for example Backscatter. And buying from private people can or is oftentimes a little cheaper, but you won't really get, you know, you don't really have any guarantee that you're getting what you want. And with Backscatter or a trusted shop in general, there is they have an interest in keeping you happy. So if you receive the gear and you're not happy with it, there's a bigger chance of them being more, you know, welcoming in exchanging it again for something different. So that's definitely something that I would consider. And lastly, if you don't buy locally and um, you can't physically look at the gear that you buy, make sure to ask for plenty of photos. So like you said before, James, make sure that you see what you're getting and what you're buying. If you can't do it like in person, make sure to get plenty of visual evidence of what you're getting. Maybe depending on what you're spending for the piece of gear, maybe it's even reasonable to ask for a, for a quick um, video call so the person can actually show you the gear and you can ask maybe some last questions that you have about the whole purchase. Uh, I wouldn't do that for a you know, $100 GoPro, but if you're spending several thousand dollars on a GH5 setup with a Nauticam housing, a monitor, monitor housing and so on, I don't see any point why you shouldn't be asking for such a thing. Yeah, no, I think those are great points. And it kind of leads into what I had as well for buying as well, which is, uh, you know, my point number one was make sure what you're buying is what you actually need. Right. Make sure that you know what you're getting. Make sure you know what camera specs are. If you're buying an older camera, does it shoot the resolution that you're looking for, the frame rate that you're looking for? You know, some people will just jump into a sale because they see a great price or a price that's within their budget. And they're like, oh, wow, I can get this camera. And then they get it and there's disappointment because it doesn't actually meet their needs for what they were hoping they were going to go and shoot. Um, so definitely agree with that one. Um, I also had, you know, the, the same thing as when you're selling and you, you want to put a, a fair market value to something, make sure as the buyer you understand what the fair market value is, right? Be aware of people that are overpricing items, but also be aware that things that seem too good to be true, too good of a deal, are probably a scam. If you see a brand new GoPro still in box, never used, never wet, and it's like 100 bucks or 100 euros, that sounds suspicious to me. So know what the fair market value should be in a range, and then you know where you should be negotiating and so on, and don't be afraid to negotiate. This is one of the only advantages of the used market over buying brand new. Um, so, you know, feel free to negotiate, but know what a fair market value is and know that if somebody's overpricing something or if it's suspiciously underpriced, that's probably not a good thing. Um, I would say in addition to that, um, also understand that you are buying secondhand. So one of the disadvantages of buying used is obviously no warranty. So if you do end up buying a, a camera set up from the other side of the country and they bubble wrap everything as best they can and they ship it off to you and the sale goes through and everything's good and you get it out of the box and it's perfectly fine and functioning and then you drop it, that's it. Like the deal's over. You've, you've paid them, they've shipped the product, there's no warranty, there's no coming back from that, there's no that's it, you've now got a paperweight because you dropped the camera out of the box. You know, if it gets damaged in transfer, you know, you're gonna be in some kind of a conflict that's gonna be impossible to resolve with a buyer who's not local to you. Uh, and it's, you know, just a risk that you're running to save money over buying new where you've got a warranty, you've got a return policy and those kind of things. So just understand that that's really the deal you're making when you jump into the used market. But I don't want to end this on a downer. I think there are great opportunities to be had out there and for people that are just starting out and want to get themselves a serious rig, there can be great deals to be had on the used market. But I think that we've presented quite a lot of value here, Matthias, with uh, with these tips for people who are considering, you know, maybe upgrading from a GoPro and they don't want to spend crazy money and they're searching around the, uh, the used market for, for deals that can be had. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think 
it really is a good way to get your hands on on camera gear and uh, also on camera gear that you might not be able to afford when you have to buy it at full price new so yeah absolutely i mean it's it's great that we have such a used market which enables people or enables also the the lifespan of certain pieces of gear to be much much longer than if they would have or they would only be owned by one person and then just left lying around in in a corner of their office so um absolutely go ahead look around and if you find a good deal be cautious but don't be afraid of going for a good deal yeah 100 percent Matthias, as always buddy thank you so much for sharing your your epic wisdom with our across the oceans audience it's always a pleasure to spend likewise, this time likewise. with you what are we going to talk about in the next episode we're going to talk about dive destinations specifically what to look out for in a dive destination when the main goal the main aim of your travel is to collect underwater videos and photos fantastic well i look forward to speaking to you then ladies and gentlemen as always thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode take care Bye-bye, guys.